Well, hello and welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. And we have uh, some updates on not only the location of uh, the Harry and Meghan Horror Mentory, but look like their home, but the owner of that home has some, well, records that you're about to find out. Thanks to an anonymous poster on St. Meghan Markle, Reveal the location that Harry and Meghan's Netflix documentary was not filmed at the Montecito Olive Garden McMansion. Credit for this post goes to a user who wants to be anonymous. From the screenshots below, it can be seen that the Meghan and Harry's Netflix documentary looks eerily similar to the property listing below. Therefore, the Netflix documentary was not filmed in Harry and Meghan's house and they didn't really change much on set. Notice the curved door arcs, the same lampshades, lampshades outside, the same curtains, even the carpet is identical. The railing is blur in the background. Here is uh, Megan talking. Okay, I already confirmed that. And yes, they um, there's the railing, there's the lamps, there's the everything. This is the same property. This is a 33 million mansion. This is double the actual price of Harry and Megan's home. Here is the second angle where they were sitting on the co coach to film together, which is identical to the image below. Notice uh, notice the setting here. And notice yeah, the background of the uh, of of the windows and all the glass and it's it's basically the same room from two different angles. But yes, it's the property. The full property listing can be seen uh, on Forbes Properties, a uh, value 33 million, address 888 Lilac Drive, Montecito, California. But what is interesting is actually revealed by Sophie, uh, Sophie Collie Girl on Twitter. Thanks, Sophie, and follow her if you want more piping hot tea. And she got this, uh, the same pitch. First, some of you may or may not know that Harry and Megan did not film the reality show in their 15 home, but at a neighboring and much more elegant 33 home. We should be shocked by this, but at this point, it's to be expected from them. Okay, we have the fake the fake setting. Uh, at the same time, someone in St. Meghan Markle on Reddit posted that, well, it makes sense to some extent to remain private, to not, sh to not show your actual home, and I, I understand that. But the problem is that everyone thought that that was their home. In fact, I think it was Vanity, Vanity Fair that fell for that. But well, Sophie Cali Girl continues. Who owns 888 Lilac? Mark Schulhoff, CEO of Quadringa Arts, a direct mail fundraising company for nonprofits, and he signed a 25 million settlement deal for the largest AMT of film relief ever obtained for deceptive charitable fundraising. In other words, a scammer. False fundraiser for disabled veterans leads to 24 million settlement. What makes Mark Schulhoff a crook and a scumbag? Besides creating the fictional disabled homeless military vet Arnie, the AG found Quadringa pocketed almost all of the 116 million raised for the unwitting charity, Disabled Beds National Foundation. All right, here's the here's the article. False fundraiser for disabled veterans leads to 24, sell, 24 million settlement with New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman. Uh, the Disabled Veterans National Foundation sought money for Arnie, describing how he lives in his car and asserting that the group was trying to help get him into a VA hospital. Everything was made up. There was no Arnie. A six-month investigation by the AG's Charities Bureau from, found Quadriga pocketed tens of millions of dollars by sending out misleading mailers. Besides the fictional Arnie, the AG found Quadriga pocketed almost all of the 116 million rates for the unwitting charity DVCF. This is terrible. This is horrible. Now, who does Mark Schulhoff want you to believe that he is? When he is not out pocketing from disabled vets, Mark is an activist. Oh, does it sound familiar? 
Sounds like Mexi may have found her next perfect husband. Mark Shulhoff, Mark About me, as a New York by birth, New Yorker by birth, Mark Shulhoff is an entrepreneur and social activist. Mark Shulhoff graduated from Franklin and Marshall College with a Bachelor of the Arts degree in 1990. He then went on to receive his master's degree from Eagleton Institute of Politics at Rogers University in 1991. Mark Shulhoff was the CEO of Innovair from 2006 to 2019. Since 2019, Mark has been the executive chairman of Blah Blah Blah. The service more than 500 charities with 4,000 professionals working across five continents. He's passionate about philanthropy, and environmental awareness, and sustainability. A saying that resonates with Mark Shulhoff is, you can make money and do good at the same time. Hmm. Huh, yeah, that sounds, yeah, that sounds a lot like Megan. So may I ask, do you have any receipts? Well, Sophie sources always bring the receipts. Thanks, Sophie, again. There's the 888 Lilac Drive from Santa Barbara, California, 93108. Okay, and... Here's this transaction history, and you see that it has been the borrower for that uh, mortgage is Mark Shulhoff right here. So, yes, this is legit. He took a loan of $10 million. How can Harry and Meghan support our veterans while they're supported renting Mark Shulhoff? 33 million mansion for their Netflix documentary, The Man Who Pocketed 100 million from the Disabled Veterans National Foundation. This is gross. This, this is obscene. This is obscene. This pair of grifters are doing things that are unspeakable. And I agree with this comment by Melanie K. Air. If Harry isn't careful, he's going to end up in prison. He's the perfect foil for all the shady types surrounding him. Or, well, or that she is looking for. This woman will go through the money so fast they'll be living on the streets of California in six months. Divorced. And someone got another clue. Dude, see, well, thank you. Is there any indication of a Sussex connection to Shulhoff? Just saw on another post that an Owen Lee pulled three separate permits to rent this. Looks like the house is owned by Fainthill Trust, Schulhoff, and they were filming there as of April 22. As maybe someone named Owen Lee pulled three separate permits to film. There he is on March 12, April 14, and April, uh, sorry, January 14, 2022, and April 21, 2022. But this is not surprising for, well, reasons that uh, we've seen so many times with the Hargles on all their shady uh, activities. And I'm sure that we'll be finding out much more in all this three hours of content and the three hours coming next week. So, my Royal Rogue is, my name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue, and remember... Much love and bliss.